Now that we've talked a little bit about rational expressions, reducing rational expressions, graphing rational functions, we're going to talk about products of rational expressions. So when you multiply two rational expressions together, you get a product. And these are some examples, but note that if you can reduce them, please just do that. Reduce the fractions first, because otherwise it's just one more place you could make an error later. So if I look at these two fractions here, I have 5a to the third over 3b times 7b to the third over 10a to the seventh. If I look at these, it would be the same as just, because multiplication is commutative, we can write all these factors in a long list. And when you multiply them together, you get the same thing. 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. And so the same idea holds here. But let's just write them out. 5 times a to the third times 7b to the third, all over 3 times b times 10a times a to the seventh. So see how it doesn't really matter if you keep them broken up or put them together. When you're multiplying, multiplication is commutative. It doesn't matter. So let's reduce it first. If I reduce out three a's in the numerator, I'll be left with a to the fourth in the denominator. If I reduce out three oh, b in the denominator, then I'll be left with two in the numerator. And 5 will reduce with 10. I'll be left with 1 and 2. 7 does not reduce with 3. So let's just rewrite this now. I'll have 1 times 7b to the second over 3 times 2a to the fourth. This gives me 7b squared over 6a to the fourth. Now let's do this another way. You can reduce them as the list instead of reducing them at the beginning. So I'll have a 1 and a 2 for the 5 and the 10. The a to the third will reduce out. That will be a 1. And a to the seventh will reduce to an a to the fourth b to the third will reduce with the b and will be have, have b squared, and 3 and 7 don't reduce. So notice that I rewrite the factors so I can keep track of what's going on. That will give me 1 times 1 times 7 times b squared, so 7b squared. In the denominator, I'll have 3 times 2 times a to the fourth, which will give me 6a to the fourth. So you can pick which way you like better. The first method, I think, goes a little bit faster because you don't have to rewrite it, but it's up to you to decide which one works best. Let's take a look at x to the second minus 16 over x squared times x squared minus 4x over x squared minus x minus 12. I'm going to factor these because if we don't factor them, it's not going to be obvious what we can take out. So we have a difference of squares here. So I'll have an x plus 4 and an x minus 4. I have an x squared minus 4x. That means if I factor out an x, I'll be left with an x minus 4 x squared minus x minus 12, that gives me an x and an x, a negative 4 and a positive 3. And the x squared just comes down. So those are all my factors. I'm going to rewrite them in a nice long list here. x plus 4 times x minus 4 times x times x minus 4 all over x squared times x minus 4 times x plus 3. 
So I'm now going to divide x minus 4 and x minus 4. We'll divide the x with one of the x's in the denominator. And we're done. Whatever's left is the answer. We have x plus 4 times x minus 4 all over x times x plus 3. Now in these questions we weren't asked anything about restricting the domain because notice they're not functions. We now have c to the third plus 8 over c to the fifth minus 4c cubed times another fraction or rational expression. c to the sixth minus 4c to the fifth plus 4c to the fourth over c squared minus 2c plus 4. So this first part I'm working on first, c cubed plus 8. I know that factors to a c plus 2, c squared plus 2c plus 4. Now I'm going to work on the denominator. I have a c to the fifth minus 4c cubed. So I'm going to factor out a c to the third and I'll be left with c squared minus 4. Now I'm going to rewrite the next part. I'm going to factor c to the sixth minus 4c to the fifth plus 4c to the fourth. It looks like there's a common factor of c to the fourth. So then I'll have c to the second minus 4c plus 4. And in the denominator, I'm going to factor c squared minus 4c plus 4. If I can. Oh, hopefully you caught the error. I made an error right here. With my sum of cubes, this should be a minus. Now, this is a good way to check your work because usually these questions are set up so something drops out. And I was looking at this denominator right here and thinking, that doesn't look like it will factor, so it should reduce in some other way. And so I noticed the numerator looked very similar to that. And then I noticed my sign error. Now they do look the same. <laughs> c squared minus 2c plus 4. Notice that now those factors match. I'm going to go ahead and reduce those two factors just to make it easier to look at. I'm also going to reduce out c cubed in the numerator and denominator, so I'll just be left with a c in the numerator. And then I'm going to rewrite it. c plus 2 times c times c squared minus 4c plus 4 all over c squared minus 4. Now remember c squared minus 4 will factor to c plus 2 and c minus 2. Also it looks like this c squared minus 4c plus 4 will factor to a c minus 2 times a c minus 2. So I can now divide those out as well. I'll have a common c minus 2 to both the numerator and denominator. I'll also have a c plus 2 common to both the numerator and denominator. My final reduced rational expression will be c times c minus 2 all over 1. So I just write it as c times c minus 2. You might also be asking yourself, well, can I also multiply that c back in? Of course you can. It would be c squared minus 2c. I would accept either one. Now let's take a look at this last one here. We have x to the third minus y to the third all over x squared plus 2xy minus 3x or 3y squared times x squared minus y squared over 
3x squared plus 6xy plus 3y squared. I need to factor this and I'm going to try and use tiny font. Hopefully you can see it. I'll have a binomial x minus y and a trinomial x squared. Same opposite, always positive. Product xy and square of y will give me y squared. I have a difference of squares, x squared minus y squared, so I'm going to factor that to an x plus y and an x minus y. In the denominator, I have x squared plus 2xy minus 3y squared. That will factor to an x plus 3y and an x minus y. Now we can double check that. If I multiply the first two, I'll get an x squared. The outer will give me negative xy, and the inner will give me positive 3xy. So the sum of those two will give me my 2xy in the middle. And then if I look at the other denominator, I have 3x squared plus 6xy plus 3y squared. I'm going to take out a common factor of 3 in this denominator, and that will give me an x squared plus 2xy plus y squared on the inside of that trinomial. And then I'm going to see if that factors a little bit more. I'll have an x plus y and an x plus y. And that should reduce. So if I look at my numerators, I believe I have an x plus y I can divide out. And that looks like it's about it. So rewriting it, I'll have an x squared plus xy plus y squared times an x minus y. And then in the denominator, I'll have an x plus 3y times an x plus y. And I also have that 3. So I'm just going to set that out front. I wouldn't go, with, go through with distributing this out so it's polynomials in the numerator and denominator. I just leave it right there like that. 